Yeah, okay. Hello, good evening, everyone. Um, it's your friend Ekoma here from Scotland. Um, I'm here to, I'm here chatting with my friend Isidore, um, who was my schoolmate back then in, in, in Futo, you know, in Nigeria. But fortunately, unfortunately, we found ourselves in the Western world. Um, Isidore lives in Canada. I live in Scotland. So, and on Facebook, we've just found out that both of us, uh, both of us share the same interest about Nigeria, you know, about seeing our country develop. Um, I see that Isidore is a, a very passionate guy about Nigeria and myself. I, I'm, I'm so passionate to see that country grow. So we decided to, you know, come up with this kind of program whereby we get our friends wherever we are in the world to come online and, you know, just, you know, on a podcast like this and, you know, share you know talk about discuss about um things in nigeria to see how nigeria can develop or how we can you know make the change we want to see um so is how are you doing how, how is canada today good 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 i'm fine man you i'm all right how's the family everybody i had to grab my son with four <laughs> this place to actually do this <laughs> yeah i did the same i mean you know these children they they are they, if i think the best way to get them these days is to give them um Smartphones and they just let you let you be. Um, yeah, it's just after this I had to take it back from him. Like this, <laughs> yeah, development. Okay, okay. So how is um, how is COVID nineteen treating you guys over there? How, how is the lockdown? Um, uh, like I'm a system engineer and we are into high tech manufacturing, so we we are kind of considered essential services. Okay. So we, yeah, I've been working like. We've been working since uh, it happened, and my wife also is a nurse. Okay. She also works. So, but then the general thing is the issue is that um, nobody's doing anything. People are people are not really going to work. Uh, things are very skeletal. So the everything is just on the low key. Uh, but besides uh, the downside is that now it seems like this week shipments are being suspended or paused or something like that. Mm -hmm. So the equipment that we ordered, parts we ordered, they are not arriving. Now. Most of them are here, but they are not being released. We don't know why. So mm -hmm. that, that's, a, that's the downside of it. But all the same, I think it's a reality check for humanity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the, same, the same here. I've been working hard for me. In fact, I thought it was going to be easier, but I didn't know it was going to be this busy for me. You know, I think it's been, I've not been this busy uh, like I've been in the office. But anyway, um, you know, you know why we why we came here. You know, we do one talk. Uh, we want to talk about Nigeria. You know, in our country where we love. You know, uh, no matter how more, how long we don't live abroad, Nigeria is still our own. Um, and we just want to make it clear: this is a a, a non-partisan show. We're not here to criticize anyone or you know talk negatively about people. We're here to you know do a same program to just talk about things. You know, see how we can affect you know changes from our own little corners here so uh, we, we both of us have agreed on a, a topic we want to talk about today and we in we land they say person they find from in house begin go come up outside yeah so, time to begin at home <laughs> yeah time to begin at home you know for people who don't understand what i talk so we want to talk about um can Igbo land develop under the current nigeria's political structure so we all know what the, the way Nigeria is structured at the moment. Um, a federation of um, 36 states and everything controlled from Abuja. Um, it works in the US, it works in other democracies, but maybe for some reason um, it doesn't appear to be working well for us. So we want to, you know, throw light on this. We are not here to talk about separation, or, but we're just here to see how can Igbo land develop. So is not, uh, just to start with you. Do, do you think um, that Nigeria, that Igbo, Igbo land, the five um, Igbo states, Abia, Eboni, Anambra, Enugu, Imo, do, do we think that we could develop um, under the current um, structure where everything is controlled from uh, Abuja? Um, like, I don't believe that uh, anything is impossible, right? Uh, obviously, today you, you hear about China lot but you may need to go and uh, go and watch the youtube uh, youtube video shenzhen the silicon valley of hardware shenzhen used to be a slum city you know more like it was shenzhen was actually like otiba village just mm -hmm. to an idea yeah that was like uh, 30 years ago it was like otiba village 
you know so shazen what happened was that you know you know how you grab something you say i want i want motherboard some people will tell you we have this motherboard we have this then you say i want a display they'll tell you we have it you have they tell you have memory ram i know my the first computer i put together in 1998 in lagos it was put together in ot but like, i got like i got it 95,000 naira then you know so the culture came in then in lagos right so what happened is that it, I went that when I read the story of Shenzhen, I was like, "Has I we've actually experienced that in Lagos or Tiba village, right?" So what happened is that because uh, people were sharing stuff, they were making hardware. It was easy for people to learn quickly, even if you did not learn how to come up with the original ideas. You must start how to make it when somebody says, "Can you help me make this?" So Shenzhen people got so good at it. So what now happened was that as uh, Shenzhen was developing, you know, gentrification is normal. It happened in New York, happens all over. So people started buying property there, property prices are going up. So they started, those people started being moved out. Even the people, there are people who just love what they do. This is something about human nature that people need to understand. These guys love what they do, right? So they were not by they were not really impressed or is motivated by go and work for this company go and work for that company you know they, they it's not their thing they had a culture they were into you say you want you carry a phone to shenzhen uh you say you want to build for somebody will just bring out a motherboard they will look at your phone and bring motherboard of that phone and break out one like in panels break out one and give you they said, don't worry, hold on. And that person will come and say, I will, I will have components. I will mount it for you. These are just people build of material. The person will just put it together. The person will say, ah, so which version did you use? It's okay, I need version 8. The person will just bring firmware and load. Now you need display. Now you need this. So within a day, you can put together a phone. But that's how in Shenzhen now, you can see an Apple phone having two SIM cards, which they don't have normally in the US right so where i'm coming from is that there is there are people who like making stuff is their thing so when that gentrification was happening so much chinese government you know they are very smart they said no you need to stop this is the thing that made shenzhen become what it is not these factories it is this culture that made these people become who they are you know if the more you build the more they run away we don't need them to run away you know, we need to protect them because that's the only way they can guarantee that development will continue spreading. So what they now did was to start developing other parts of China and protected that area. If you go there now, there is a line. Those our evil people who then buy China, they will tell you about the story of Shenzhen. So where we are coming from is that if you bring it back to our situation, there are things people are just good at. You know, just let them do it. You cannot come and change people's way of life and you know come and impose a new culture to them a new ideology a, new, a vision that they don't buy into they're kicking against it so yeah you even when you said that america did it if you look at america and all these countries they are practicing through confederation actual true federation we are the federal government has power but it doesn't have power over certain things it's like a you know a union of equals right so you don't have people depending on federal government too much there are things federal government will come in, you will see them come together and beg federal government to take care of it, like defending the country and all that. But when, when somebody does want to be farming, let that person farm. When the person wants to be making shoe, let that person make shoe. That's what they, you can make fun of that person all you want. That's what they, that person, you know. So the whole idea, the Nigerian, where I see a problem is that there is no attention to who we are. Right, if you go to Benway State, the food basket, these people like making food. That's it. Don't go there and start selling policies to them. Don't go there and start selling, you know, the culture of the things coming to the north doors. They tell you, oh, this is our problem. You must also uh, be it too. Then it becomes their problem. They become distracted, and all that. They, they, they don't have any issues with you doing it, but it's not their, it's not their main focus. Right? If you go to US, you will see. Places like uh, Texas, they are farmers, and then all you people, they don't, you can make, they even make fun of them that they are cowboys. They are okay with that. Well, in the context, in the context of Igbo land, in, in the context mm -hmm. of Igbo land, uh, remember we, we were talking about under the current um, structure, under the current political structure, 
um, where we have the central government in Abuja, you know, controlling everything and um, the states, you know, feeding off uh, from Abuja. And um, do you think that will help Igbo land to, to develop? No, do no, we need a now. new system of, of um, government? No, no, yeah, the, the point I'm trying to make is that beyond the over-centralization of power, yeah. in the world, right, there is also influence that people don't need, right? When you go and, when you go and bring culture, like they say Abuja culture, right? Mm -hmm. When you're not mindful of people's way of life people and their history, you come and give them a new story. Now people don't know what to do. Like, don't you get it? Like, look at, look at, all the, it's like Anambra State now, where they are traders. All of a sudden, you're there, you come in there, you start, you, you, you take politics and start chewing them. They will do the politics the way they do trade. I have to win, or else I will think I will lose. That's why it becomes bloody there. Then you see, say, somebody come back and say, ah, is it not the Anambra we know? They're like, yeah, you went there and went and changed your story. Leave them the way they are. You know, the, the influence is, is where I believe we are having a problem, right? Somebody in Porta Court, they have oil there. That's fine. If you, if you like the oil business, go there. But try to make sure that the influence of that oil does not diminish the significance of other areas that also require development. Do you get my point now? Because some people now, it become, it's such a small place. And there isn't a lot available for people there. But if you are concentrating on oil too much, every time more you money, all your money, you don't even think about developing all that. And then everybody goes for that call. Now they find there's nothing there. Now that's how you see all these social vices coming up. Lagos is, is, is better because it was already prepared to, to run its course, you know, carry its weight. So yeah, so you that is it's okay for people to have regions, right, states and all that. That's not an issue. But people need to exercise some autonomy in decision making. It also, on the social side, it also goes to social responsibility. Everybody's good, it's nobody's good. Like you are now, I can't just come into your house and, and begin and talk anyhow. You kick me out, right? But if I come and put you in a house, right, and I'll be paying your rent, I can walk into the house and, you know, talk anyhow, you won't say anything. So the, the whole thing of Abuja has taken away the notion the spirit of responsibility from our people. The productivity and creativity from our people. You, don't, you, you, you do not exercise initiative, so it makes it hard for you to even own anything. You know, so, like... Think about so, it. What do you think? So, in, the, in this case now, what do you think should be um, done? Is it a case of um, cultural resensitization? Or, uh, we need, or do we need autonomy? Okay, okay, so let's put it this way. Let's put it this way. Out today, you know, I've been spending time. I don't. I, I don't think it's because of the uh, pandemic or whatever. I like studying. You know, you, you we've all done engineering now. You've gotten your masters. We, we, need, we need to. We need to speed up our because we yeah, have. No, it's okay. So it doesn't yeah. address all our uh, our education does not address all our issues. So I'm learning from people who have succeeded, yeah. and the case what well, the case that is the gold standard now in Singapore. Singapore from the one engineered their social cohesion. They have diversity system, they engineered it. They made sure everybody, you know, had direct contact with everybody, culture, religion, and all that. They maintain that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, quota remember, system. remember Singapore is a Muslim country. Yeah, I think you need to. No, but they have Christians. Okay, they have Christians, they have that, yeah. It's, ma it's majorly a, a Muslim country. I get it. I'm just giving you an example. I am saying that it is a, it is a, a gold standard for the people that believe in effectiveness of government yeah. you understand that uh -huh. so so let's step back and say in nigeria an example is this to give you an example of how this over centralization is an issue electricity is a, a typical example you know in in canada here we buy electricity ontario generates electricity we have a lot of nuclear plants here even some of our people guys work in nuclear plants in ontario they are nuclear energy engineers in ontario here Quebec, the same thing. So Quebec sells electricity to to Eastern, East, North Eastern America. So you know Quebec, that's with their major revenue, including aerospace. Okay, so Quebec, it's, it's an industry that Quebec runs, in addition to oil that they have. Ontario, Ontario runs their own. So if Ontario does not have electricity today, Quebec sells electricity to us. 
They also send the thesis to other regions. Some other regions don't do other things that they are good at. So, but in the case of Nigeria, we have a central grid. Nigeria's central grid can carry the whole of sub-Saharan Africa. But you know, but people don't know that. It's actually doing it now. The problem there is that Nigeria has electricity, right, that has been generated. But that electricity cannot be transmitted to regions where they need it. You see that now. Is and it a problem of centralization? So over, central, over centralization. I'm giving you an example. You know, when you give it this name, people will know and people will think that we've had this thing before, break it down. I'm breaking it down as an example. Maybe in another podcast, I can pick up another industry and tell you how over centralization is affecting us. Right? I'm saying, so electricity, we need electricity. If we have electricity, I can assure you, both of us will not, we will all be back home. <laughs> that one is said, no, like I won't be here. Because as an engineer, I don't need to live in any part of the world. All I need is resources, infrastructure to do my work. So we like technology. But for us to get electricity in the East, it has to come from Abuja or Lokoja, where they have the dams, the northern area, where they put it. And it will pass almost five states to get to East. You know what? They put it in the exclusive list. So what they are saying is that you have to have all the National Assembly people come together and vote. But with our, with our political climate, somebody in Katsina had to vote for somebody in Aba to get electricity. How is that possible? So that's also the reason why we are where we are today in terms of that electricity. Meanwhile, if you say let the eastern region de de develop their own electricity, they will not have to worry about that vote. And I can assure you, I believe that this is what Aba Kiari went to sign with Siemens before he got uh, coronavirus. If I, if, I can, if I can chip in here, um, yeah, go ahead, yeah. is it not time we, you know, yeah, within the eastern states, for example, um, we have five states and we've been known to be, about is known to be productive, um, on it as well is known to be productive, you know, we're yeah. creating... Over the high tech, over the high tech and, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, Do, don't you think within these states that our leadership should have come together to think about, you know, have a, a regional master plan, even while we're in the confederate or while we're in the federation or while we're in, in Nigeria. That is, that is true. We come together as a people, and, you know, the That's leaders true. of the five states uh, to come together to have a development master plan. For example, if I can say, roads. You know, we can't continue waiting on Abu Abuja to develop roads between Abia State and the Enugu State, Abia State and the Ebony State, Ebony State and the Enugu State. Don't you see that it, 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 it's possible that, can't we be calling for our leaders to, you know, yeah, we, we could be saying our centralization is the problem, but is, is it not time we start thinking about these are our leaders that it is time for them to sit down? I don't know what they discuss in their meetings, in their Southeast Governors meeting, but is it not time for them to sit down and have a kind of development master plan for the Southeast, which can allow trade to happen? Because money, as you know, is the lifeline of the economy. And if, the money, if there's no flow of money within the region, the region cannot develop. So is it not high time that the leaders say, okay, they sit down and say, let's have a kind of development master plan. For example, roads alone, whereby we, which can allow the transportation of our goods, farm produce, goods from our battle or nature, or nature to over it, over it too. You know, is it not, is, is this something that regional autonomy will solve, or, or is this something that can still be done under this current arrangement? You are describing, you are describing regional autonomy. And you are saying, is it not what regional autonomy will solve? You know, you said five states, that's a region, right? So you are yeah, saying that I mean, when, when we are still within this federation, is it not? Is there anything restricting them? Do they need a law to s say, okay, within themselves, okay, why don't me... we develop our own region and sit down and? Okay. So, so remember, remember, we're discussing about development in Ibo land. No, no, I get you. I get you. So, sit, think, so think about it this way, right? I, I have, I, I always try to. We are not kids anymore, so yeah. you, you should have enough experience that when you say something, you should back it up. What I have come to learn in life is that if you don't ask for things, you won't get it. Yeah, let's call it what it is, right? Sometimes they tell you this is how things are, but there is always this theory of exceptions. People will grant exceptions to you for you when you manifest that, when you show that you need that, and also how it benefits everybody. 
right? So think of so I get the fact that we need regional. We, we keep saying regional autonomy, regional autonomy. The thing is that we all need to come together and say this is what we want, right? When we say that is what we want, we stick to it, and we will not let anybody. We say we we didn't this year. Remember how we talked about the Niger Bridge thing, and uh, remember the second Niger Bridge thing. Yeah. So everybody assume that is something that is needed. I can assure you, if you want the Niger Bridge to be finished before the end of this year, it will be finished. What is needed is political consciousness. You get my point now, right? Political consciousness that people like like this, you will you will see the impact of what you're doing now. If you can, if more people can come out and objectively be talking about these issues, without cessation is fine right uh, staying together is also fine like you know nobody has the answer to this problem now also don't forget that england who colonized nigeria who still run nigeria they are also part of this right so which goes to say that at some point we need to go to whoever are the handlers or the stakeholders of nigeria let's not be naive here and say this is what we want right and when we say it is what we want, we should also expect that some people will, will kick against it. There is no point in spending energy worrying about those people who will kick against it. You need to be very clear about what you want and pursue it. And say, I want to achieve this thing between this period and this period. And that's it. So it, does, it precludes whatever the governors are doing, paying salaries and all the policies. That's different. We need to be very clear about what we want. So if we do that, like, even if another issue that I may, by may counter it comes up, we need to be able to stand up and say, hey, we already agreed on this. That has to happen. We cannot continue, you know, going back and forth, go back and forth, back and forth, and be using our collective vision in life or for politics. You get my point? That's how this thing will be done. It happens here now. The point I was trying to make here, the point I was trying to make, if you can allow me to jump in, is that... Go ahead. Under the current... We're talking about the development of our of Igbo land. Under the current arrangement, Okay. Now that we haven't got autonomy, which is what most Igbo people are looking for, you know, we want some kind of um, autonomy, regional autonomy, whereby we can for decision making, control our own resources, and yeah. pay taxes to the government. But if you look at the current um, situation of the southeast, if you go in and look at the the budgets of all of the southeast states, if you look at the revenue they are, you know, they are generating, um. Do you don't you think that still under the current arrangement that it is time for our leaders to come together to have a kind of development master plan for the southeast under the current arrangement because nobody is granting you autonomy is not granted like um you go to a, a coffee shop and say um, no. give me give me coffee while we are still in this Nigeria and while we are still receiving billions of naira from crude sales. Wait, hold on, hold on, wait, wait. wait, wait. Let me just finish. Can yeah, you think together and say, okay, let's have a development master plan whereby we can now start to develop our region. Must we wait for autonomy to come or must we wait for the central government to develop our place? Uh, okay. These things have to be funded. Right? It has to be funded. Hmm. Uh, in addition to being funded, uh, uh, somebody has to see this as a, a net strategically, a net positive. Yeah. Right? So far, when we talk about this, people don't see it as a net positive for the country. Let's call it what it is. Right? No, but even you, because we're in Nigeria. Yeah. I had that's the problem. So we, on our own, we need people who can market this first as a net positive to the country first because for one bank to come and sign any loan to you by the structural economic uh, political setup of the country the federal government had to approve such loans right if I, was, if, I, if, I, if I come in here have your state government just got a loan of i think up to up to 24 billion or something to develop okay. a part of our from the world bank Okay. So, so, but, but what I'm okay. saying, let, so let me, go, so let me get my question so that you understand what I mean. What of from our annual budget, like it's done in every other place, what of from annual, an annual budget, we bring out from each state's budget, so we bring out 10% of our annual budget to the development of our region, mm -hmm. to, to the global development of our reg, uh, region, or let's say, you know, development of interconnecting roads between, between states. 
is it not is it something we need to wait for Abuja to do for us, or is it something that our governors that we need to now start talking to our governors to see why don't we start taking these initiatives by ourselves? Volume. Yeah. Okay. You are making a bit. Just one minute. Olivia, Shh. making a valid point. So let's put it this way, right? Um, I don't believe that uh, we cannot get money. I don't believe so, right? And all these projects the World Bank is talking about, they are all good. Let's call it what it is. Mm -hmm. the, the thing is that if a vision is poorly articulated, it will not go anywhere. One person will just take credit for it. And before you know it, the person, the political affiliation of that person becomes a constraint and a challenge. You're making a valid point. But if this if 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 this loan you're talking about now is put to use, right? These guys need to come and tell other people, other part of the country that hey, this is what we are doing. Right? So, so the idea, you doing it only yourself will never work because you, when this thing gets to a point, they stop. We since since I was I became an adult in Nigeria today, it was only once I had about vision 2020. This year is 2020. I don't know of any vision that have been set up in Nigeria, right? That went anywhere. So these governors coming up with their ideas and that they are about and this and all that. This there needs to be a strategy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is it not time while we are still in this federation, still seeking mm -hmm. autonomy or some form of autonomy? Don't you think that it's now time? But they've been talking about those about for the, for the, for the governors, for example. Remember, we are talking about Igbo land here. Yeah. Um, is it not time? Is it not? Don't you think it's right for our southeast governors to come together with for, with a vision, to the, a strategic vision to mm -hmm. develop the southeast, which may include, for example, you know, allocating ten, appropriating ten percent of their annual budgets to regional development without okay, central government. Okay, so my question. So you said this thing now. You talked about the loan the World Bank is talking about. I get yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So my other question is, do the universities in Abia states, are they affiliated to this on a structural level? Do the federal universities around there, are they affiliated to this? Does this project fit into a vision that the region agrees to? Now, no, uh, 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 you know, uh, we are talking about, we are no longer talking about a state now, we are talking, no, about, we are talking about a region. It will come together. Now, like you, why, why I spoke about um, uh, World Bank, why, why I spoke about the World Bank loan was because you were, uh, you spoke about World Bank. It is possible that these states come together as well as a region and approach World, World Bank for a loan. But these are initiatives, they can come up together. But what I'm saying, is it not time that we now have a strategic, a regional strategic vision of developing our place while we are still in the Federation? Or must we wait till the time we get autonomy or must we start waiting for the central government to do everything for us? Uh, if you ask me, uh, if you ask, if you ask me, I strongly believe that anything is possible. Yeah. Anything is possible. What what matters is if this thing is still not marketed and accepted, right, as a net positive. The consequence is that it will be thwarted politically. This is always where we, we miss these things, right? We need to say, okay, can this vision be devoid of political affiliation? Can we say it's not a PDP thing or it's an APC thing? Can we move it aside and focus on that vision? Like Canada, the uh, US has a Transmorgan pipe, pipeline. Those pipeline projects, because it's not really something that is, is critical or war or something like that. Once in a while, this government comes and shuts it down. Um, um, jobs are lost. Most of your friends that went to Calgary called them on the phone. That's what they are suffering now. By the time they were allowing them to come to Calgary, that project was supposed to ramp up. So these things happen. So it's not like it doesn't happen over here. The thing is that these people over here has already gotten what they need to survive and grow, right? Over there, we haven't gotten anything. So how the question you, you what you're asking for is the answer is political structure behind it, social policy, social culture. Like this is the development vision that we want. We found it and isolate it. 
let it run on its own. Remember, you can't do, you can't achieve anything without without politics. There, there must be politics. We are not a homogeneous entity. We we have political parties, but we have one thing constant, which is the region, the Igbo region, and it doesn't matter. So, um, like I, I learned, I, I when I went to learn, I know. I learned about Lagos that Lagos has a, a, a vision, a, a, a master plan of what it will look like. So it doesn't matter what governor comes in, he continues with that master plan. So I'm not saying that Igbo land has to be ruled as an entity. But we know that these governors come together as if in a forum as Southeast governors. They do that devoid of their political parties and they still come out with political statements and decisions. What I'm saying is, it not time now that they start thinking about, you know, initiatives to develop the region without waiting on the central government. Like I said, uh, appropriating 10% of their annual, or even 5% of their annual budgets to say, okay, over the next eight years, we are going to do interconnecting roads within the region. Okay, so, okay, so you are saying, yes, you are talking about. Uh... I get the angle of interconnecting roads, right? So your assumption is that if the roads are clear, the assumption is that if the roads are running well, right, that uh, development will flourish. That's what you are assuming, right? Yeah, I think that's what, uh, again, uh, um, it's, not, it's not the only problem we have in the region, but that is one of the major problems we have in the region. You can't travel freely from uh, uh, from um, uh, Omaha to Enugu. You can't travel freely from uh, um, uh, from um, I had to, for example, Akwaibom, you can't travel freely from um, uh, from Abia State to Ebony State because of bad roads. A again, we are traders. We we can, you know, sell things locally. We can, people from Abakiliki used to come to Abba to buy things. People from Onicha, uh, Abba used to go to Onicha. I mean, so can they come together as a unit and, you know, say, okay, we want to develop these original roads without waiting for the federal government. Let's appropriate 10% of, because it's going to improve the economy of our own state, each individual state. No, okay, okay, so, mm, uh, you're talking about roads, which I get. Yeah. I am, I am talking about human capital development. I'm talking about human, human capital development. But that, right? that's one of them, I'm just giving an example. Oh yeah, so, okay, so, m m when I say strategy, Strategy is important. There are certain development goals you will come at. Don't forget, strategy mission is a vision is long term. Then mission goals to achieve those missions. There are some good vision you will put in place now. They will they will become a springboard. For yeah, is it not so, true that you start thinking the road, that? Yeah, roads? Yeah, yeah, roads are fine, right? But there is a reason. Okay, Aquai bomb has Aquai bomb has a place. And Calabar, the has roads there. Let's call it what it is. So, but you don't see a lot of technology coming out of that place, right? There were your companies there. Yeah. But you don't see a lot of technology coming out of there. What happened in Shenzhen is this will prove my theory that it's all about human human factor. Shenzhen people were just making stuff. It become a tourist attraction for every engineer that wants, you know, you create stuff. Now you want to go at people who will help you make it. Chinese government had no option than to start developing Shenzhen. No, yeah, you, you're talking about that. I understood where you're coming so, from. So that, I'm, not, I'm saying it. that's one part of it. No, that's but the strategy. Part. So the, 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 what I'm saying is that the strategy is that first, what could, what made Shenzhen even work? Electricity. Even when they didn't have every other thing, they had electricity, so they could be making stuff. There are some things, if we have, you know, you, you, you're you an engineer now, you understand Pareto 80-20 rule, right? Mm -hmm. There's one thing is, 20% well, of the issue is always responsible for 80% of the impact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So there is, we over here, we call it 95%. There is that 5% thing that you don't do. It's not for the 5% like failure of success, yeah. I have, narrowed, I have narrowed Nigeria's own down to the 5%. Uh, the 5% to electricity. You know why? I will not be in Canada. I will not, like, I will be in Nigeria today if we have electricity. And I can tell you, I have developed so many technologies that we brought it out in Africa. But I could not do it if I'm in Nigeria, right? And now I'm going around looking for factories to actually make this stuff. So these are jobs. We are making a lot of them in Nigeria there, but not all of them. Anything that can be made in Nigeria for our technology, I am going to make it there. 
You get my point. So we're not we're not going into particular details. We're not going into. We, we, I'm, I'm not talking about the. I'm not talking about details. I'm talking about because what you're talking about is that a critical part of development. Human. Say, you're talk, what, what you're talking about is top down. Yeah, uh, the development as a whole. So I'm not talking about. Yeah, you're talking about. Even if, about, you, even if you develop your goods, you need still need to. You still need roads to transport them. For example, if people can, if the people want to carry, if people need your goods, they want to carry. They will take a helicopter, come there and carry it. The point is that the goods are not even being made. And yeah, saying, don't we need? Don't we need a? Don't is it not time that the leaders come together? Uh -huh. Now, so we are giving the leaders, the, the leaders don't know these things. We are telling them when you come together, these are the things you should be looking at. Don't come together and be talking about politics. You have only one hour to have a meeting, you are discussing uh, what, what IPOB did to you. And say, these things don't, they will, they will be there. If they are giving their run around. I am telling you, China had their own issues, but I keep using that Shenzhen example because if I don't have this Shenzhen example, it will be like, okay, have you seen it where it worked before? Two ways of development top down. The other one is bottom up. With this top down, it's not working. You can say, okay, roads might become hard to do. Can we find a way and budget resources to say this region where young people like making stuff? Can we just give them electricity and grant them electricity for the next five years? Budget it and just close your eyes. Those so what them. you're saying, what, what it still goes back to the point I was making mm -hmm. that our leaders need to focus on. The, no, the, but it's a on the in within the region. You know, think about it now. My 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 take is that I, as an engineer, I am not down for telling you what is right or what is wrong. You already have the problem. Mm -hmm. Our job is to show you, explain to you, either we solve the problem or we give you insight of how to solve the problem. I am saying that this is what can work. There are people there who know how to do stuff. They are intelligent and this is their affiliation this is what gets them going their energy is there okay what do they need now you're have give them electricity first pay for it give them internet and leave it there watch observe <laughs> it's so simple to do observe how busy they are going to be and see then you can come back and say wow you can they make stuff you, can, you bring it out and go and show the world they have made this thing here somebody will say um okay so how do i even get it to continue do you guys have factory there we say no that's okay let's talk about electricity we can bring new, modular nuclear power plant and give you guys there do you know that if they start allowing our people to make stuff yeah yeah i said you know that if they start allowing our people to make stuff at some point all the manufacturers will start even hiding that it was made here so that they will be the only one happening it will become such a hot cake it happened in china did you ever know that everything was made in china was it now everybody discovered it became open like if you don't make stuff in china now people think it's fake you get my point so let us work with what we can the political side of it we, we don't forget we, we miss civics in our schools so we, we don't know politics very well our politics is very polarized we don't know it so let us work with what we, we are good at which is making stuff That's yeah, what I you can't make you can't make anything without that political will so the point i'm trying to make and we, remember we the what we're discussing here is the development of Ebola, not the development of what what i'm saying is it not high time now mm -hmm. that we stop complaining about a regional autonomy of uh, so, uh, well, it's more like uh, it's more like both of us now and come together mm -hmm. And come together as a unit. But it's, it's some people's job now. No, like, what are is it not time are now? We don't now start coming together to think about. It's not going to happen. No, no, no. You see, you need to understand how the human mind works. When every carpenter sees every problem as a nail, sorry, every carpenter that has only hammer in his toolkit sees every problem there as a nail. These politicians, they are not stupid. They are gurus in whatever they are gurus at. But they are not gurus in what both of us are talking about. Go and look at the history of every nation. It's always when they put technocrats in that things change. These guys are not technocrats. They go and read all these PhD and all these courses, you know, they now call this blow big drama, try to win the election. They don't win their election. Now it's when they enter inside the office, they start thinking of how to bring people for ideas. You should have your own idea before you enter there. 
You get my point? So these so people. What is your What is your advice? My point. My point that is first leaders. and foremost, yeah, just assume that we are never going to be politicians. I'm sorry, but when these politicians enter, they have to admit to themselves that it is not their thing. They they don't come up with solutions. They should stop making a political appointment based on people who work for them during the elections. They should go and bring technocrats and charge them to deliver and leave the rest to them. That's that because technocrats will come in and solve your problem. And you know, they will, their job is to solve the problem because even if you get out of office, they still want to remain relevant. You get my point? So that's what we need. When technocrats enter there, they start doing bottom up approach. You know, go in and say, you can do this, make it. You can. Our region, I'm only concerned about our region. We make stuff. And I want us to continue making so we will attract the right investors, right? Money will come. And when that money comes, the investors will even go and push this government to develop that place. Yeah, thank, thank you so much, Isdo. Um, I think we need to be wrapping up here. But my, my own contribution is that um, without a plan, you okay. have failed. Because the, the Englishman says, he who has failed to plan, has failed. So mm -hmm. I think the development of our region, Igbo land, is not incumbent on Abuja. It is not incumbent on one uh, on on President Donald Trump. It's not incumbent on the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. It is incumbent on our leaders to come together to have to develop a, a plan for the region. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what political party you belong to. There is one thing that is constant: is that we are Igbos. Yeah, that's we a point. We come together, mm -hmm. de develop a plan, identify what our problems are as a people that mm -hmm. we can solve at the regional level. For like I said, I, I, I just use the road as an example. We yeah. can we can build our interconnecting roads. So co come up with a plan on how to build our connecting roads to make sure that goods flow around, people flow around, money flows around, and then we can appropriate like each state. Five or ten percent of his budget to this annually, and see our region develop. And you know, this is something that we need. We finish this one, we move on to the next one. So that's my contribution. Yeah. That's my contribution. So before we close, yeah. Yeah. So for me to round up, um, I just wanted to understand that uh, my own take is that development. There are two methods to approach development: top down or bottom up, right? If you talked about roads, I can tell you Enugu, Ebony State has the best road network, right, in Eastern Nigeria. What about connecting roads to other states? Oh, oh okay, that, okay, yeah, let, let's, I'm just giving an example that, you know, it doesn't mean that the Ebony people, people are dumb, that, yeah. that's not the case, uh, yeah. but the Ebony people are not making stuff like Aba people. Yeah. Uh, so where I'm coming from, there are things we call clusters. You go there. You know, go there and find out what people are good at. You know, who? who? Oh no! Oh, you see, the, the thing is, even the even, even the local government chairman of that place can start by saying, "Here is my vision. I see what is going on there." We're, we're, talking, about, we're talking about realities. We're talking about the budget holders here. We're, let, let's let's be realistic. The governors hold the budgets, so let's talk about at that level. You know, we're talking about reality. If you if budgeting, budgeting is now you define where you want to spend money and say how much you want to spend there. Yeah. I'm just telling you now, let the person that is going to do the budgeting identify that this is my strategic vision. This place is my vision. That's what China did. They did it in Shenzhen. So are you talking about at the state level or are you talking about? I'm the... saying it does not even matter. I'm just saying that it does not even matter what they would I'm not going to force you to do what I I'm saying. Can we add when we identify clusters that are already active? Right today, pour, pour gasoline there. Let them catch fire. You know, let everybody go there. Then from there, other people will start benefiting. That, that, that's my. Own. Nobody has had this thing before, so we need to start understanding that that strategy actually works. Right? You cannot see somebody that's a farmer and start talking to that person about making bags and so okay, now I need to give you road. I get the part of connecting road and all that connect, but I'm saying if you're very good at something, let them equip you. And bring people around you, keep building around you. From there, other, China, that's what China has been doing. Now, China is now known. Who knew who knew today that everything started in Shenzhen? If you make it so nobody paid attention to them. But when the Shenzhen culture came up, they made it such a way that everybody came around there. Then other regions started spreading. China never told anybody this thing until I found it on YouTube. So, yes, we, 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 should, we should be asking for what is practical, what is possible. You know, political work, that's there. It will happen at some point. But this is something that can be done easily. You go there, people that make bars, give them machines, 
right? People that uh, make shoes, give them machines, equip them. Put if you finish school, go there, be paying you a salary, be making it. And at the same time, I'll be helping you with supply chain to go and sell it. You will see. I think we have the same movement. The same movement is doing that now to an extent. Exactly. Uh, uh, our, our discussion was based on them. Um, so I'm going to cut you off here. And I'm going to stop yeah. you here for us to, you know, so that our viewers can watch it. Um, I think we're just talking about regional development rather than state development. But I think it's been nice talking to you. I know viewers, it, it, it wasn't have gone very well the way you wanted it today, but I think it's just a start. We want to start provoking our thoughts and um, we welcome other people who might be interested in coming, you know, joining on the panel, you know, to discuss. Like you've seen, we are not, it's not, it's not partisan. We are not attacking any politician we're not we're not pdp we're not apc we're none of these we're just guys um who live abroad um who love nigeria who love to see our country develop and uh, remember this program is not only it's not limited to people living in a particular region if you have anything to offer you know there's something you can you know discuss constructively in a way that can help our place develop please um feel free to inbox us or drop some comments and um, join us in, uh, indicate your interest to join us in the next episode. So it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for uh, for, for agreeing to the, coming up with the initiative and agreeing to the initiative. Um, speak to you next time. Okay, Have thanks. Nice yeah, yeah. Bye. Bye-bye. Where did they say leave?